Hey guys, I'm Saurav and in this video, I will be talking about editing photos in mobile phone. I will be using Lightroom to edit photos. I will show you the overall workflow. The numbers which I'm showing don't go by that. Just understand the workflow and edit your images accordingly. This tutorial will be an in-depth tutorial, so I recommend you to watch till end. Without wasting any time, let's get started. Before starting with the editing, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a website, a domain or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Now let's start editing the image. So I'm editing this particular image. It's a raw file captured with my Nikon D750. The first thing I see is the color. It's a bit too warm for me. So what I will do is first I will go and click on the color option and set my white balance. So it was 3300 Kelvin and I'm going to keep it about 2600. If you're shooting in JPEG, you won't get the Kelvin option, but still you can adjust your white balance. So once I'm happy with the overall temperature, then I will slightly desaturate the image. Now I'm desaturating the image just because I want a desaturated look. Doesn't mean you have to desaturate it yourself as well. If you want the saturation to be more, increase the saturation. The next thing is the lighting. So the first thing I'm going to do is increase my highlights, the shadows a bit. So I'm holding two fingers and I'm sliding it down. The parts you see in the black are not complete white. So I adjust it till I feel the main areas of the image are not blown out and I still have good whites in my image. Then I adjust the blacks. Then I do the same but this time towards the negative side. So just about minus 16 or 17 looks good for this image. Again it depends on the kind of image you are working with. Now to increase the contrast, there is a contrast slider so you can increase or decrease the contrast. But I'm going to use tone curve for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a S shape with a tone curve to increase the contrast. This gives me more flexibility to increase the contrast in the shadows and increase the contrast in highlights as well. Now I'm editing it very quickly just to show you the demonstration. When I'm editing for myself, I will take some time. If you want a faded look, you can always lift the black point just a bit and get that faded look. Now I feel I want to add some blues in my shadows. So I'll go to the blue curve and slightly pick the this particular option. So now I have added certain blues in my image. Now I'm overall happy with the color and contrast. The next thing is I'll again go to colors for more adjustments. Then I'll go to mix and now I'll pick the color picker option. Then I will just zoom into this image and as you can see if I click here and I move the saturation of that particular color changes. So as I said I'm going for a desaturated look. I'm going to keep it at about minus 15. I will increase the saturation of the blues a bit just by about plus 15 because I want the blues to be more saturated and the orange to be less saturated. In the similar manner if I want the skin to be bright I will just select that color and increase the luminance just a bit. Now you have all these powerful options but make sure that you do not over process your images. Try to keep the image looking natural but get better contrast and colors. The next thing is the clarity. Now when I'm editing portraits, when I increase my highlights, shadows, it gives kind of an HDRish look and you want that natural look. So I use a negative clarity. So just about minus 10 would be great. And for vignetting, what I do is I go crazy with vignetting towards minus 100 and then I adjust my midpoint so that the subject, the actual subject is not getting affected. I adjust my feather according to the look I want and then I set my vignetting at about minus 15 or minus 20. Vignetting is a very powerful option to focus your attention towards the main subject. Again you can use split toning for different color adjustments here. I'm not going to do that. I have done it with the tone curve. The next thing is sharpening. So for sharpening, since this is a raw file and I have shot it at an ISO of 800. If you don't know what are the image settings, you can go and click on show info. So in show info, you can tap on it and you will see the ISO 800. So since I have shot it at ISO 800 and I know my camera's performance, I can sharpen it at about 75. Then I will use a noise reduction of about 25. Now when you're sharpening the image, the other parts in the image which are not in focus, you don't want them to get sharpened because you are just adding unnecessary noise. So for that, masking is a very great option. Again, same, two fingers and slide it. The part which you will see in black is not getting sharpened. Just about 15 would be great. Again, it depends on your image. 
So I'm happy with the sharpening. Now what I've done is I've sharpened my image, but at the same time I have removed the noise. So that gives me the best result. The next thing is the lens correction. So I will remove any kind of chromatic aberration and lens profile correction. Doesn't matter if you're using a DSLR or a mobile phone. There are lens correction for each type of camera and do that to get optimum quality. I won't play with the distortion. The, there are certain presets here you can use. I'm not big fan of presets. I like to create my own look, so I'm not going to go and do it. Now we are done with the global adjustments. Global adjustments will be applied to all your image. We are going to do some local selective adjustments for some parts of the image. So I'm going to go to selective adjustments. I'm going to click on this particular option and click on radial filter. Now this particular option is only available in the premium version of Lightroom Mobile. If you're very serious about editing, I would recommend to buy it. If you are into normal basic editing, it won't be required. But for slightly in-depth and more professional editing, you will need these options. So the part you see in the red will get affected. So first thing I'm doing is I'm going to increase my shadows and increase my highlights just a bit to make that face look a bit better. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this mask and I'm going to invert this mask. So by inverting the mask, the other parts will get affected and I'm going to slightly decrease my exposure. Again, I'm doing this just because I want to grab the attention towards the face. Then I'm going to zoom into my image and add slightly more shadows towards the eyes. Again the same, the radial filter, create a new radial filter and increase the shadows. Again, duplicate the mask and use it for the other eye as well. Now I feel the top part is a bit too bright. So I will be using a gradual filter for the top part and just reduce the exposure a bit. I'm going to use the same duplicate mask and this time I will use it for the bottom part. So I'm done with the selective editing. This is the before and this is the after. So with the help of certain global and local adjustments, you can make your images look extremely professional. Try to learn these techniques, try to experiment with your own images and you will get better in editing. I hope you got a basic idea about how to edit images. Before ending the video, let's talk about the sponsors of the video, that is Squarespace. So as a photographer, as a videographer, you need to showcase your work to the larger audience, right? And the website is a great tool for that. Squarespace is an amazing option for creating websites, for creating online store. You can use their beautiful templates to make your websites look much more attractive. They have amazing customers service so if you have any queries you can ask them i hope this video helped you and if it did press the like button if you are new to the channel press the subscribe button for more such content i will talk to you guys in the next one bye